Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. It's been a while and in this video today I'm going to dis discuss the different kinds of models that you can build for semantic similarity using BERT or Roberta or Albert or any kind of transformer based model. So we will be using the hugging face repository transformers obviously and I'm I'm not going to code in this video rather I'm going to discuss a few different kind of model architectures that you can build. So what is semantic similarity? First you need some kind of data set. So there is a very popular data set from Stanford. It's called SNLI data set, SNLI corpus. So Stanford Natural Language Inference Corpus. So you see this data set, you have like different kinds of judgments and you have you are given, you're provided with two different texts. So like if your hypothesis is some men are playing a sport and your text is a soccer game with multiple males playing, then, then the judgment is entailment. So this is what you have to uh, predict. And you can see like uh, there are many different kinds of data sets like this. So you can, you can start from here. You can also see here like the different benchmarks that were built. So uh, SEMBERT is currently leading, if I'm not wrong. And uh, you also have another data set from Quora. It's called Quora Question Pairs. So Quora Question Pairs was also a competition in Kaggle. It's quite an old data set, three years old data set now, but it's very interesting competition. So just go and take a look at this data set here. Um, so the data set here looks, uh, I, I'm not able to open it, but maybe from the test one. So you have, you have given one question. Um, how does the surface pro himself for compare with iPad pro? Okay. Itself. Uh, why did Microsoft choose core M3 and not core i3 home surface for a uh, home surface pro four. So, uh, you you're given with two questions and if you look at the training data set which is currently zipped and I'm gonna show you here but maybe I can show you a preview uh, when we start a little bit of coding I'm, I mean not coding today but anyways so uh, you you're given two questions you have two question question one and question two and if you have to say like if they are uh, similar to each other if they're asking the same kind of thing so let me see if uh, they provide if they don't provide an example here but anyways so that's the that's the basic idea so you have you have question 1 you have question 2 and you have to predict if it's if they are duplicate of each other um duplicate as in if they have essentially the same meaning so this is a data set that you can use for semant semantic similarity so Whenever we are building a model and you have seen a lot of my videos, if you have not seen the bird sentiment model, go and take a look at that one uh, where I explain all these things. So uh, when, whenever we are building the model, we have one file called config.py, right? And here we define the device, we define the number of epochs we want to train on. So basically everything that you would like to change uh, when you're optimizing your model. Uh, and you have some fixed stuff that you use everywhere. So here the bird path is I've, I've uh, stored all the files in my uh, local machine. So it's here and I have the tokenizer. So bird tokenizer. Um, so we have, we have the config file. The next thing that we have to do is we need to build a data set. So now the data set and engine um, not not engine but the data set and the model can be built in several different ways for this kind of problem so when we talk about bird we have um, a CLS token in the beginning then we have some tokens let's call them tokens a then we have a SCP token so this is like when you have one single sentence when you have two sentences which is like mostly a question and an answer, right? You have tokens underscore B and then a SCP token. So this is how the data is formatted. But um, 
in our case can we format it like this probably yes so you can have question one so i will just copy this thing so let's say we are using the data set from quora so you have instead of token say you have question one and then you have question two and then another sap token so this is this is what we have and this is how we can format the data set but we can also format it in a diff different way where we don't join these two questions we can keep both the questions separate from each other so we can have input one so let's call it input one input one looks something like this where you have a cls token and question one and a cp token and you can also have input two like this we have the same thing and question two so these are the two ways in which you can format your data set and that's that's very important to know and understand so you you can probably also remove this sap from here and you have question one and question two but you will be losing a lot of information right um so you can choose any of these two different formats now which format works best is something that i will leave up to you to find out and now what we do is um we go for let's let's build a data set data set class so you i have built a data set class but the, this, this data set class is pretty simple so what i do is first of all i create the bird data set training so you can have any name you want and it has three inputs so question one which is a list of question one list of question two and a target which is in our case binary and then you have the length function which returns the length of the data set so so far so good and this is something you have seen a lot of times and uh, then what i do in get item function is i grab question one and then i grab question two and I i'm converting both of them to string if in case if they're not string um and then i'm splitting by all the white spaces and joining by one space so this cleans my data a little bit if you have extra spaces or some kind of weird white spaces in the data that you you can get rid of them like like this doing like this and then i take the tokenizer that that i have already have that's the same as bird tokenizer and use the encode plus function so encode plus function is uh taking a pair of text so text and text pair so you have question one and question two if you're saying add special tokens to true then it will add the special tokens like cls token scp token and you define some kind of max len so let's assume our max len is 512 i think uh, here i was playing around with 256 let me change it to 512 so 512 years zero max len and you can also have pad to max len so that's that's all you need and it it will return you a dictionary so you have input ids you have token type ids and attention mask okay now uh, you return all these things so this data set class that we have built works for one question uh, sorry both questions but it combines both question and two one so you have question one so the first scenario that we discussed so this one question one scp question two scp so like this and uh what you can also do is instead of using encode plus or you can you can keep using encode plus and have this set to none uh and then you can define a max len for both so max len one and max len two something like this so let's say both of them are 256 256 tokens each i think that's quite good and uh then you return ids underscore one i uh, token type ids underscore one mask underscore one and so on so you return like uh three values ids token type ids and mask for question one and you also return ids token type ids and mask for question two so 
we now have built data set in both ways that we discussed. So now the main part comes and the main part is the model part. A model is very interesting here and uh, let's let's take a look. So to build a model, um, let's say we are using BERT as base. Uh, so you, you, if you are combining both these sent sentences together, so if you're using the first scenario, then you need the BERT, maybe you can have some kind of uh, dropout, right? Um, let's say you have you have some kind of dropout and uh, then you have a linear function uh, layer so output layer which is nothing but a linear layer and uh, this takes some kind of input features so let's say something and one so since we have only one output it's a binary classification problem and then we can we can in the end we can uh, try to sigmoid it uh, to get the probability values right so we don't have to we don't have to uh, have two uh, outputs just one is enough and now we can also define a forward function def forward self and this takes the same thing so this takes ids token type IDs and uh, mask attention mask right so now we uh, pass it through BERT so we can say it will output BERT as two different kinds of outputs right if you have not changed the config so I will say self dot BERT let me see IDs equal to IDs token type IDs is token type IDs and mask attention mask is mask so hopefully that's uh, correct and now it has two different outputs so first one is the sequence output so sequence output is like for every token you will get a vector of size x and now this x is 768 if you have uh BERT base or 1024 if you have BERT large so uh we don't want to use this output for now so we will use o2 which is the output from the pooled uh BERT pooler layer so this is the pooled output and this output shape will be just one vector of size 768 so now what what i do is I will take O2 and pass it through the dropout layer and here is O2 and this goes to output layer so return self dot output O2 and now now I know that like here I have uh, 768 input right as input so this is one of my one of the models that I have but is it going to work now if, if it's going to work or is it not going to work that's something that you need to figure out on your own and that's that's why you, you have to try it the second thing that you can do is um, so you can here you can also use um, O1 so the output and what you do is you can you can take uh, mean pooling so so you can you can do like uh, mean pooling and you can do max pooling okay and then you can concatenate them um, and then pass it through the dropout layer and then you might have to change the number of inputs here so it should be 768 into 2 um, so this is something you can you can also do um, but I'm, I I don't think it's going to work because it's 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 not a problem where I mean the, there are two different things right two different sentences which can be similar to each other or not so it's probably better if we use two bird heads so instead of just bird I will use bird one and then bird one will have a dropout and i will use bird two okay and i will pass um 
question one so here uh, this, this will change to ids one ids two token type ids one and token type id is two and mask one and mask two so this is the change we will have and now i think uh, we can just pass through the first bert layer so bert underscore one and similarly we can do bert underscore two so let's let's hide this one so you have let's say b1 let's call it b1 and this comes from bird underscore one and you also need to fix these things so this one this one and take the bird two output two so here you have everything from sentence two that goes to the second head and uh, b2 so now what you can do is you are actually getting two vectors for the whole sentence so one one vector for question one and another vector for question two this is what you're getting and now now what you can do is you can obviously add drop out or maybe concatenate them together add a bunch of uh, layers and uh, you you can then in the end you can uh, return it through output so maybe i can concatenate these two using concat right and then maybe i can add a couple of dense layers and then i can pass it through output obviously i will need to change values here uh, and define other linear layers but there is also one more thing that you can do and that is you can try to find uh, the cosine distance between b1 and b2 so b1 and b2 are essentially your sentence vectors so if you try to find the cosine distance between these two and uh, you probably need to modify your target in such a way that it's between minus one to one um, because um, the cosine distance was between minus one to one so uh, and then you can for for loss you can use maybe you can use mean squared error so um, you calculate the cosine distance using the embedding here and embedding here and you can calculate cosine distance very easily uh, in pytorch so there there is a function cosine similarity and you, you can use that right so you have two inputs and pass it through cosine similarity and um, then you can calculate uh, mean squared error as so you can use mean squared error as loss function uh, between the similarity value and uh, between the uh, target and if you're if you're going for the other option where you are like uh, concatenating these two and uh, creating a bunch of layers and in the end returning uh, one value then you can you can go for binary cross entropy loss um, so these are the two three or maybe more variations have come up with uh, so here also what you can do is take the sequence output uh and uh, apply pooling so you you can do that or you can also take the output of the last two or three layers so this these are the few things that i've i've come up with and um, i'm thinking of making um, a real coding video using quora question pairs but if you come up with something before me then post it in comments and i would keep my video short for today uh, and uh, thank you very much see you next time bye